Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Delhi Township Board of Trustees meeting for January the 27th of 2016. As is our usual procedure, we will begin first with a moment of silence and then the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight's moments of si moment of silence is dedicated to all the public safety personnel, both fire and police. To those who have served, we say thanks. To those who are currently serving, we say thanks. And especially, we'd like to remember at this time, firefighter Patrick Wolterman from Hamilton. He gave the ultimate sacrifice in the face of danger, and it reminds us all of how fragile the lives of our public safety employees really are. Our community has grieved their loss as well. So now a moment of silence for firefighter Patrick Wolterman and our public service employees, and then the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, this is great. We've got a full house tonight. And besides the families of the two police officers, we also have a guest here who is a Boy Scout visitor. Where are you, Mr. Matthew Cook? All right, well, it's good to have you here. Uh, are you working on a particular badge? Uh, yes, citizenship and community. Well, great, great. We're glad to have you here with us tonight. All right, then, we'll open the, we've opened the meeting. Let's have motions for consideration. Mr. Luby. Motion 2016-011, approve the minutes of the Board of Trustees meeting held on January 13, 2016, and dispense with the reading. I move motion 2016-001 to approve the minutes. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Motion 2016-012, approve bills for payment. I move motion 2016-012 to approve bills for payment. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Motion 2016-013, approve the payment of overtime for pay period ending January 19th, 2016. I move motion 2016-013 to approve the payment of overtime. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Motion 2016-014. Schedule the first two public hearings concerning 2016 construction, repair, or maintenance of sidewalks, curbs, and gutters along various township streets for Wednesday, February 24th, 2016 at 6 p.m. and directing notice by mail and publication as required by law and the township's policy and procedures. I move motion 2016-014 to schedule the first two public hearings. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Motion 2016-015, approve the application grant submission for regional assistance to firefighters grant to FEMA in conjunction with 58 other fire agencies by Fire Chief Campbell, requesting funding for 12 of the total 710 radios being requested with the Delhi Township Fire Department share of $4,660 in matching funds already budgeted as part of the 2016 TIF fund and 16.1610.0205 mobile equipment fire account. I move motion 2016-015 to approve the application grant submission to FEMA. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Motion passes. Motion 2016-015, approve the promotion of Police Officer William R. Murphy to the rank of Corporal, effective January 27th, 2016. I move motion 2016-015 to approve the promotion of Officer William R. Murphy. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. All right, moving along to presentations. Our first presentation this evening is from the Police Department. And we're very pleased to conduct the swearing-in ceremony of Sergeant Richard J. Schmaltz III, as well as Corporal William R. Murphy. Jeff Braun, Acting Chief. Thank you very much. It's an honor to bring these two officers before you tonight. If uh, Rich and his family would come up. It would be an error if I didn't recognize Chief Jim Howworth. Obviously, he's in the back of the room. We weren't sure if he was going to be able to make it tonight because he's been battling a, an ailment in his ankle. So 
He blesses with his presence tonight, and we're proud of him being here. Um, first and foremost, Richard J. Smaltz um, is a graduate from Elder High School. He graduated from University of Cincinnati with an associate's degree in criminal justice in 1993, graduated from Great Oaks Police Academy in 1994. He was a police officer for the village of Gulf Manor, uh, easy to say, from 1995 to 1996. He obtained his bachelor's degree in criminal justice from University of Cincinnati in 1995. Um, he was hired by our police department in 1996. So essentially, this is his 20th year with the police department. While working here in Delhi, he has served in, in many capacities, that being a field training officer, uh, firearms instructor, a pepper spray instructor, a, along with many other things. Um, throughout his years with Delhi, he's, he's received many commendations and uh, lots of uh, letters from citizens. Uh, most importantly, his commendations were three life-saving awards that he received for uh, using a defibrillator to bring somebody back to life. So he's, he's received three of those. <clears throat> Rich was promoted to the rank of corporal in February of 2014. Here tonight with Rich is his wife, Jennifer, his children, RJ, Ava, and Owen. Also present with uh, Sergeant Schmaltz tonight is his father, um, retired Captain Dick Schmaltz. He, he served uh, Cincinnati PD for over 45 years. And I have to recognize uh, his brother-in-law as well, who serves also with Springfield Township Police Department, his assistant chief there. That being said, if you want to come down and, 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 and right over here, raise your right hand. I, Richard J. Schmaltz III, do solemnly swear. I, Richard J. Schmaltz III, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States of America that I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States of America, the Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio, the Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio, and the resolutions of the Township of Delhi, and the resolutions of the Township of Delhi, and I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform, and I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties imp incumbent upon me as patrol sergeant, and all the duties incumbent upon me as a patrol sergeant of the Delhi Township Police Department, so help me God. Of the Delhi Township Police Department, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. The next officer is Officer William Murphy, if he wants to come up with his family. Bill is also a graduate from Elder High School in 1988. I guess there's a common theme tonight. Yes, sir. He graduated from University of Cincinnati with an associate's degree in criminal justice in 1991. Um, graduated also from the Great Oaks Police Academy in 1994. Was a police officer for the Hamilton County Park District from 94 to 2000 and was hired as a police officer with our township police department in 2000. So this is essentially his 16th year. While working here in the Delhi community, has served many, also in many facets as a field training officer. He's a standardized field sobriety testing instructor. He assisted with the investigative division during the summer months while he's working in the schools. And most importantly, um, most people know Bill as his, his services he provides to the school as a school resource officer, and he's been doing so for the last 10 years. And I, I can't say how many kids and how many families he's uh, had an impact on since doing that. He's also received several commendations during his years here in Delhi and received countless letters of thanks from citizens of our community. Here tonight with Bill are his wife, Jen, his, his sons, Brad and Brady, his parents, Bill and Bonnie Murphy, which I should note that uh, they were both graduates from our Citizens Police Academy as well. Mother-in-law, uh, Rick and Velma Hollenkamp. With that being said, if you'd come down and do the honors. I am William R. Murphy. 
I, William R. Murphy, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States of America. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States of America. The Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio. The Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio. And the resolutions of the Township of Delhi. And the resolutions of the Township of Delhi. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me all the duties incumbent upon me as the patrol corporal of the Delhi Township Police Department as the patrol corporal of the Delhi Township Police Department so help me God so help me God congratulations Thank you. One of the happiest things we get to do around here. Um, I believe the two families are probably um, pretty excited here in a moment. We're going to dismiss you, but I think the trustee correspondence, we, we'd each like to have a few words with you. Trustee Oswald? I just want to congratulate Sergeant Smoles and Corporal uh, Bill Murphy now. Um, you guys do a great job. We always see you around, um, and congratulations. Trustee Sturtz. Yes. Same thing. Thank you for your service to us and sticking with us. Happy anniversary. Happy 20 years. That's wonderful. Um, but thank you for everything that you've done. It's well deserved. We know the community thinks highly of you, as does your administration. So, again, thank you. It makes us so proud to be able to promote from the ranks. And you guys just, you know, you're shining stars to us. That's all there is. Um, Murphy, I was a little bit concerned. I was afraid I was going to have to give you an Emmy after the Alice performance. But... <laughs> um, if any of you get a chance to watch, it's a, it's a great video done for the Oak Hills Local School District about an active shooter. And um, Mr. Murphy over there is the uh, star performer, so to speak. So congratulations to both you and your families, and we do appreciate all you do. Thank you. And now, if you'd like to go and celebrate, we understand. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Good luck. Have a good one. Am I gonna see you in hey Bill? Am I gonna see you in juvenile court anymore now? Am I gonna see you in juvenile court anymore? <laughs> yeah. You're in adult court now. You'll be sad. See you. Take care, Murph. <laughs> Okay, continuing with the meeting then. Um, Trustee Oswald, did you have any other correspondence? Nothing further. Trustee Sturtz? Nothing, thank you. All right, nothing from here. Report from the fiscal officer, Mr. Luby? No report tonight. All right, no public hearings. Report from department. I do have an update from Catherine Ferrick, our community and economic development manager. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna keep this short. Definitely not as exciting as swearing in. Uh, but I do want to go over, as I'm now leaving on April 1st, as everyone is aware, I do want to go over what we're doing, what has been accomplished, and how the transition plan is going to work from, for my position. This is just a little bit of a recap of what we've done uh, when it comes to the plan. The plan was adopted by the Board of Trustees back last fall, 
and the Hamilton County Planning Commission adopted, adopted Plan the Pike at their meeting uh, early in January. What this does is it, it gives the plan a little bit more heft. It becomes part of the county's land use plan. Uh, so that will do nothing but help us in the long run. We were also asked to submit the plan for the Frankie Ferris Community Planning Awards. Um, this is a regional honor that um, you know we're really excited for being asked and we'll keep the community in the loop as to how that uh, process goes. An update on the catalytic sites. Uh, this is the, the, what we're calling the three sites in the township that we have chosen to select um, and give a little bit more effort on their redevelopment. Um, because the property changed hands at Delphair, even though we were aware that the community really wanted something uh, to happen on that site, the plan was already formed prior to our uh, launch of Plan the Pike. So we weren't really able to include that among these three sites. The three that we did select would be the Central Hardware Building, the Remke site, and a, a potential pharmacy site east of Greenwell near our current fire station. Uh, the one that we foresee being developed first is the Central Hardware Building. That's where the bulk of our efforts to date have been. And <laughs> um, it, it will increase property values along all of the buildings to the south and also some of the neighborhoods on either side of that flanking it. Uh, so let's see. Um, with the Stantec, we're generating marketing materials. And these will include flyers. There's an example right to the right of uh, that slide that shows a little bit of what we'll be presenting to developers that, that might be interested in locating here in Delhi. Um, my name will not be on these flyers. We have corrected it, but I did want to, to include the visual just to show you that we will have materials that we will be um, actively circulating throughout the developer community. Uh, my, my successor will have these. I will have these. Uh, the administrator, Pete Landrum, will be, uh, his business card will be included on them for now. Uh, that way, they will, developers will always have a contact here at the township. Development finance. We met today with Dinsmore and Scholl, um, and we are addressing some specific questions now that are related to existing developer interest and some, some items that we foresee occurring through our tax increment finance district and some of our development. The sites that have been selected fall largely under the TIF district of 1994, which gives us a lot more leeway. Also, because those, those uh, property values were locked in at 1994, the increment is significant. It's a, it's a, a healthy amount of, of money that we have to work through for public improvements to sites to attract developers if we need them. Um, we'll use a joint economic development district structure to, to uh, incentivize development as well because if we're increasing density throughout the township, if we're increasing vehicles traveling on our roads, we will need to uh, start setting aside money for repairs to and increased infrastructure. The Delhi Pike Overlay District. Um, Tom Stahlhaber could speak more to this, of course, but uh, just very briefly, he is working as the, the lead in getting the overlay district updated in line with the land use plan set out by our Plan the Pike. It will be codified. It's going to be about a six-month process to get that segment of it done, and then the rest of the township will follow thereafter. Uh, this will provide us with a little bit more teeth to protect any investments that occur in the township to guide the shape of those developments so that we're getting what we want as a community, what the community's residents have told us. Finally, just as a transfer of all remaining responsibilities that I have not addressed so far, the conversations that we've been having with developers to date, um, it's been clear from the get-go that I will be leaving the township in April. Always, 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 I'm, I'm including <coughs> Administrator Landrum, I'm including Director Stahlhaber um, in any conversations that I have. The new Community Development Director hopefully will be here before I leave, so I'll have a chance to hand those contacts over directly. But in the event that that doesn't occur by the time I leave, Administrator Landrum will, of course, serve as the link so that we don't lose any contacts with these developers. In terms of TIF, Administrator Landrum is the primary contact for Dinsmore and Scholl, and will continue to serve that function. Um, we're working together on a policy to guide the investments that we may make in any of these development projects to protect the township resources. 
Land use codification, Director Stahlhaber is and will continue to be the primary contact and contract manager for that effort. The new community development director will become involved with that upon his or her hire, but that will be a, a, a direct transfer. It won't, it won't have anything to do with me, so the township doesn't need to worry about that. Other programs and events, I'm in the process of typing up all kinds of uh, how-tos and informational documents for my successor. Um, all the other programs are fairly cut and dry. It just involves a transfer of contacts and how to do what. Uh, so I don't foresee that being any kind of an issue for the new community development director. Uh, that's all I had to say tonight. Uh, I tried to keep it brief. Unfortunately, I didn't do that because I gab a lot. <laughs> but it's really been a pleasure serving Delhi Township and I'm not anywhere close to finished yet. <laughs> so um, if I don't see the, the trustees again, if I have no further chance to talk to the residents of the township, thank you all. It's been a, a wonderful community to work for. We've gotten a lot done, and I know that in the next few years, the face of this community will change. Um, but underneath it all, it will remain Delhi, which is the community I've grown to love. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. I hope that puts everyone a little bit more at ease about the departure plans. I know it does the board. Um, Trustee Oswald, did you have any questions? No, thank you. You okay? No. All right. Okay. Um, we also want to hear tonight from uh, our, um, our administrator, Pete Landrum. We uh, received a notification actually yesterday, uh, I, maybe a notification, maybe an invitation. Uh, the board is aware of the, I think each of you received an, the same uh, email. And I made sure our um, safety services, our uh, fire and police chiefs have a actually received it as well. Uh, the Hamilton County Board of uh, Commissioners has uh, been evaluating over the past three years potential options to implement a long-term funding mechanism for the county's 911 emergency communication system. Uh, they have invited us to a public safety, uh, well, public hearing that is going, two public hearings that are going to be held. I imagine they're duplicates, so you can go to either one of them, but uh, they'll be in February, February 3rd and February 10th, um, both at 11.30 a.m. Uh, at the Board of County Commissioners, uh, the administration building. Um, I think they're looking for feedback on, you know, selection of what to do, feedback from the jurisdictions, the uh, uh, safety directors, and so forth. Uh, I think specifically from the elected officials, they're looking for feedback. Um, not to go down too long of a history, but this has been going on, well, wait, I've been here, you know, over three years, coming up on three and a half years, and it was... That was one of my first meetings I remember going to. Actually, I attended the meeting unofficially before I actually started by a few days. And that was the topic of the meeting, uh, um, was how to fund the 911 system. It's been thrown around as, you know, you guys have uh, has have heard it probably, the public have heard it, uh, put on property tax, put on a, as a utility tax, put on as a user fee, put on your cell phone bill you know, multiple ideas has came around and none of them has, uh, I guess, passed the test, so to speak, as of yet, because it's still an issue for the uh, county as the way if people don't don't understand. And uh, Jeff and Chief Campbell, uh, if you guys would come up, please. Um, we have uh, we pay a, a significant amount per month on detailed billing every time 911 is called and 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 please let let me say this to the public very loud and very clear if you have a 911 emergency call 911 do not hesitate do not think about it but if the cat's in the tree <laughs> You know, uh, you can call, you know, nine two two zero zero six zero for the police department. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we spend significant, the way the county has it now is each dispatch is uh, billed at a certain rate. I'll let the, the professionals tell you exactly what the rates are. But they've increased every year, every year, every year, 5%, 9%. Um, it's getting, you know, and what, what's really bad too is every time there is a dispatch of calls, we usually get, 
whatever the rate is, which is now $20 and something, we get it times two because they'll dispatch a fire, they'll dispatch the police. Um, so, you know, you can imagine multiple, all the 911 calls that we get times two for the most part. So it's $40 every single call. Um, and we have multiple calls sometimes by the same people, <laughs> sometimes multiple daily. And it racks up very quickly. Uh, but my whole point in this is that the county, uh, and this is part of the, you know, the feedback we need from the trustees, uh, but, you know, part of the problem the county says, you know, is, a, of course, a maintenance of the system, the re uh, uh, programming and things of that nature going on that cost money for the system to maintain it. Uh, we ourselves are going through the county right now is doing it for free, but updating our radios, our portable radios. But in two years' time, two years, we have max of two years probably, Motorola will not support the, our radios any longer, nor the parts for it. So in two years' time, we have about $700,000 in radios that will need to be replaced. So, you know, and that's kind of outside the 911 system, although when the original communication years ago, Hamilton County got the grant, so to speak, and the radios were provided to us uh, at, back then. Uh, but now it's looking like this will be a Dell High Township cost to us and to uh, every jurisdiction that would is in the same boat as us that haven't already replaced it. But if uh, one of you would like to talk, or each of you can talk about your cost that you see to your department uh, on an annual basis, and please update everybody on the current uh, cost per call, please. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, so what you're being asked to do basically is come by invitation to the commissioner's office to have them explain to you how uh, the funding system doesn't work under its current structure. And they will tell you Hamilton County does it like no one else in Ohio and that they've exercised every opportunity, every Ohio revised code to allow them to supplement the funds. And what they've come down to is after a task force completed their findings in 2014, like uh, Mr. Landrum was saying, uh, it came down to detail rates, the general fund out of the county, parcel assessment, um, utility service fees, sales tax levy, and phone device charges. And they've pretty much checked the box off of everything. So this is what we're left with. They're gonna say to you, how do you feel about us supplementing the funds through this utility tax charge, which essentially um, would tack a tax on Time Warner cable bills, Duke Energy bills, Cincinnati Bell telephone, those type of things, in order to provide police and fire basically a 30% savings. So that subsidy, in a sense, um, both police and fire in the county, we subsidize 911 at 65% of their operating expenses. It's pretty significant. And what they've done is they've kind of passed this on to us. Um, 2007, we paid about $36,000 for 911 dispatch fees. Uh, this year, we're at 65000 So, your, Is that your today, Doug? Hmm? Is that your to date? No, that's for 2016. Okay. That's what we've set aside. They they've changed the model now. They they already tell us what what we're going to spend for 2016, based on the average number of details that they've we've experienced in the last three years, and um, just like was explained before, um, you know the police have their details that they respond to solely on their own. We we do not respond. We're not alerted to them but every one of our calls, they're alerted to. And every, once a, every one of those instances, you're on the hook for $42. It's dollars its twenty ninety five per, you know, agency. And it can't be taken back. I mean, we audit the runs and we review it, but uh, ultimately they came to us and said it could go up to twenty ninety five, and it did. And if this funding is allowed to go through without referendum, it could be as early as June or July, I believe that they would start crediting, but we are going to pay 2095 until they're free and clear with this uh, utility tax. 
Thank you. Like Doug said, every, every call we go on, it's a 2095 dispatch. Pete Landrum, like Administrator Landrum said, <coughs> if it's an emergency, we'll gladly pay that. We don't want anybody not to call 911 on, a, on an emergency call. But if it's something that's non-emergency, if it's something that can wait, or so, it's a report run or something like that, please call the station at 922-0060 and uh, either leave a message or talk to the clerk that answers the phone if it's during business hours. And we'll gladly give you the same police services if, it, or if you would have dialed 911 and it would say it was 2095. Just to give you an idea as far as our expenditures go, um, back in 2008, we responded or were dispatched to, by the county to about 10,100 runs. The detail rate back then was $14 per call. So I guess fast track up till now, or I should say in 15, we responded to 75, 71 calls, and we paid more for responding to 3,000 less runs than we did in 08. We're advertising on a weekly or all the time on our website as far as for people to call our non-emergency number so we can prevent calls from going to them so we can save that 2095. But as you can see, our services they're providing to us are going down, but our money is going up. So it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's critical for us to take a hard look at and obviously have our voice, voice heard you know, when, when they're talking about these things in open forums. But the critical piece is, is, is obviously it, it's costing both of our budgets a lot of money. Continue, it will continue to do so if we don't figure out a way to, to start limiting our costs. But if, if you look at it as on simple terms, you're, we're they're dispatching 3,000 less runs, but we're paying more money over a seven-year period. Yeah, with less money coming in. Well, I did make two phone calls today. I made one to Senator Seitz and I made one to Representative Lou Terhar because obviously this whole conversation goes beyond just the Hamilton County. It's going to require, um, when you talk about the utility bill, it requires a um, legislative move. And I I'm gonna be very honest with you. It doesn't look like the legislature is going to let this happen. Um, to put this on a utility bill um, can be done without vote and no one wants to do that and understandably why and it's somewhat of a, a loophole really isn't what it is but it's a it's a piece of a legislature written in 1967 when there weren't cell phones and there weren't there wasn't cable television and so even the definition of what utility is, is somewhat in a gray area. So Senator Seitz got back to me, and I have two pages worth of notes from Senator Seitz. And while I was on the phone with him, Representative Lou Terhar called, and he's going to call us tomorrow in the car as we head to the Ohio Township meeting. But we're caught between a rock and a hard spot because the communication center itself has problems. It is outdated. The Motorola, actually, I think they ended up taking Motorola to court over the pieces. Isn't that right, Pete? Yeah, in order to get the radios that everyone is currently using to last just that little bit longer. So the problem is not only the, hand, the radios, but it's also the communication center, the actual facility equipment that needs to be updated. If everyone remembers about two years, almost three years ago, there was a huge article in the Enquirer about the communications center. At that time, they estimated the cost of replacing that to be close to 10 million. So if you figure with the cost of everything the way it is, we're probably looking at cost, the cost of replacing a communications center somewhere around 12 million to 13 million at this point, plus the cost of the radios to all of the townships. Um, I did point out to Senator Seitz that this task force I kind of had an issue with because township residents in Hamilton County represent almost 40% of the population. And of a 14-person task force, there were two people from townships, one trustee and one fire chief. So I really, I, I trust them to be our voice but I really would have felt better if we'd had a stronger township voice in that task force. 
Um, this is going to be an ongoing issue, and um, no one has a solution to it at this point. So, did you have any questions, Trustee Oswald? What will you guys, as department heads, I mean, obviously, you know all the pros and cons. You obviously want a less charge per call because our charges are going down. What would you guys want to see happen? I mean, what would ideally, because ultimately, I mean, we've asked you to go to this meeting and speak on our behalf. Um, but what is it you guys are looking for? Well, you just look at the models north of here, Butler County, Ham uh, Warren County, Claremont County. They don't have these issues. Uh, and their, why department, is that? their departments don't fund the 911 system. Uh, we've been told it's because of the number of PSAPs. It's uh, the number of agencies that actually dispatch in Hamilton County creates part of the problem. We have such a dense population, but you can look elsewhere in the state and they'll tell you Hamilton County does it different. Um, and it's exploratory. They're just trying to find the, the next best thing. It's not a, I'm not here to convince you to do one thing or another. It, it's to educate you the simple fact that like Jeff was saying, you have to speak cautiously on this because if you make the whole point financial, you're not going to get people to call 911 when they need to. And so stressing that fact that, you know, it's an emergency call. If you think it's an emergency call, it, it's one of those things we can't control. And, and we tend to get in this situation. We talk about the money being the driving factor. Um, you know, it, it's about 1.6% of my budget. It's manageable. I know the police have a lot to deal with on their side. Um, what I don't like is 10% increases every year. Uh, that doesn't seem to sit well with if you look at like what you're actually getting. And I understand they're under a significant number of capital improvements. But my recommendation is your taxpayers are now paying for the services in the tune of both of our departments. And now they're asking them to pay another tax through another function, like you said, that may not be legal. Because we went down the road of parcel tax. They talked about property tax. And, um, you know, when you look at it, police and fire agencies covering 65% of their budget, that, that's big. Especially when fire departments in other counties have all their radios dispatch everything free, no charge. Um, the question is maybe doing a little research and seeing exactly how much of a priority 911 is in the county and in their budget. That's that's something that other counties, I think, put a little bit more emphasis on. But, I mean, from that standpoint, I'm not here to provide a recommendation, just an understanding of um, the biggest takeaway. If anybody hears anything, just call 911. You have an emergency. Don't <laughs> don't take it back. We, we're, we're not here advising don't call, you know. <laughs> So in short, our rates are going to continue to go up. Our calls may go down, and in Columbus, the legislature won't address it or prevent it from happening. Right. <laughs> I shell. mean, the from what we were told, and and other states have the model for it is applying a charge twenty five cents per cell phone that exists out there, and uh, Ohio just doesn't have the legal means to do so. It would take major legislation, but. If you look state to state, that's what most states have opted in into. So you pay a quarter to have your cell phone active, and then that supplements your 911 and uh, dispatching fees. But, yeah, so far the county hasn't had much success. They're just checking the boxes and going down the list. This is the next great, you know, idea to offset it. They hear us complain all the time about the costs and the services, that balancing. And I'm not here to knock 911 either. So if it the county does provide a good system, um, but it's in turmoil. You know, you have a director Director just resigned. They named an interim, and on top of all this with CAD changes, radio updates, it's a hot mess. <laughs> so, but um, I definitely would do some extra homework as to how the county is funding it now and ask some real questions on what priority it is to the county because they're providing the service, and you look elsewhere, it seems to be a little bit higher on the priority list. Great point. Great point. Jeff, did you have something you wanted to add? Just real quick. Obviously, Doug did a fantastic job explaining all that, but 
where, where else can you have no control over the money you spend and, and they and they talk about or or pick what percentage it goes up and we have no control over anything that they do obviously we don't have an answer to, to how to fix it and at this point we don't have a recommendation either but all we're trying to do is provide an understanding of, as far as what we're seeing and what we have seen over this last several years of increased cost and obviously they provide a great service but you know if if who can argue that you're you know you're you're losing 30 percent of the call volume but you're paying more money right. you know and you have we have zero control over you know the way they run their, their the department we have no control over what they decide they want to buy we have no control over any of that you know i would obviously like doug had said as far as to educate ourselves to the best of our ability and you know when we have a voice to be heard obviously cautiously make a stance on on what we feel is right but the most important thing is is that the cost is uncontrollable and it it continues to rise and just like everything else but there, there, there isn't too many line items in our budget besides health insurance that's going up at the percentage that this is and you know looking at it that way i mean that's that's pretty incredible all right but thank Trustee you Sturtz. um i do have a question you were you mentioned that every time an ambulance or a fire truck goes out an officer goes also is there a reason that that happens all the time? Can it be predetermined that they don't need an officer on the spot? I mean, I, it may be a small amount of money, but I, over the time, it, it becomes a large amount of money. I mean, there's there's issues with accountability. Um, there's ex issues with the safety and security of personnel. And first and for foremost, I mean, to have law enforcement tagged along with fire and EMS. Um, you know, a good percentage of our runs are fine. We don't need any additional assistance, but they're the eyes and ears of that security factor that many of our folks need in some of the situations they get into. Um, but it's hard to differentiate that at the 911 level. They have to be able to distinguish between what's a call that I think it would be a good idea to send a police officer on and whatnot. And now it's the county is very simple in their approach. Um, you know, we're looking at it from the standpoint of, you know, they they provide uh, an excellent service in first response. They carry AEDs. They get the, you know, because they're out on the road patrolling. We tend to be in the stations. You know, they show up on the scene first. They're that primary care, believe it or not. It, that's that transfer that we need. They, it's added seconds. It, it's almost like when you look at all the reasons financially to take them off the run response, look at what you're losing. So, Essentially, you're, you're getting your money's worth and then some, and it's not to not to encourage. And we've looked at it. There's ways to, to cut down, and I feel for their situations because there's a lot of times where there there's just no use to to help. You know, there's nothing that they can do, and it's a twenty one dollar charge. So, I mean, but I think to err on that that side, their services are needed much more than we even realize. Thank you. First and foremost is if you have a life-threatening emergency of any kind, 911 is the number to call. And like Pete described, the cat in the tree is the 922-0060 number. So that's what we've provided. And, and frankly, we were a little bit reprimanded for doing that because that reduced the revenue from the county on the number of 911 calls. But, and our, our own police department has done a great job at making sure that they monitor how many calls actually come through the comp center to make sure that we're billed correctly. And I really compliment you on your astuteness to that because that's big. Jeff. Also, if I could add something, I know Chief Howarth does a tremendous job looking at that billing system and, you know, getting rebates and reductions in, in, in pay. And he's also had several conversations as far as um, what we get dispatched to, what we don't get dispatched to. Obviously, we work hand in hand, and you know, we we never want to put anybody in jeopardy as far as safety goes. But when we start looking at these runs and saying, well, what if we don't respond to this run or that run, or and the, and then the response you get is, well, if you don't respond to them, well, we have to make up that revenue somewhere else. So we have to continue to dispatch you. Otherwise, we may have to charge the, the fire department twice as much. So it's, it's one of those things where uh, that's the focal point, I, I think, that we need to look at. Obviously, I don't, I don't think anybody has the exact answer that we need to have. No. But 
when everything is a, is, is a dollar amount, obviously, you know, I would rather pay $21 and be there with our brother firefighters every day if it's, if it's going to be a situation where we protect them or they protect us. It's, it, it goes hand in hand. But it's, but it's one of those things where – but that's the mindset that we're kind of facing and we're looking at as far as, as, far as the funding model. Well, there is one thing that everyone agrees on, and that is it's a problem. And the other thing everyone agrees on is that the options for a solution to the problem hasn't been found yet. So we will go to the meeting on February the 3rd, and we will take great notes and make great contributions to the conversation, we hope, and um, come back to you with any update that we have about 911. And in the meantime, again, if you're in a life-threatening situation, the number is 911. Okay? Thanks, guys. Pete, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Okay. All right, then. Reading of the resolutions, Mr. Luby. Resolution 2016-009, resolution approving purchase order obligations, incurred on behalf of the township by the township administrator, authorizing payment of certain purchase order obligations and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mr. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mr. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2016-010, resolution budgeting and amending revenues, making appropriations for expenses and various funds, and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Administrator Landrum? The uh, transfers uh, and amended uh, revenue estimates and uh, I should say additional appropriations are all firehouse related, uh, the new firehouse related, the one that's not built yet that sh uh, will be underway hopefully soon. Uh, what we have is a, a amended revenue estimates uh, we in our today we closed on our uh, loan um, our bond for two and a half million dollars for a firehouse that's part of it uh, we hope to be within budget of about three million dollars in total cost uh, the rest of the revenue will be from TIF um, the payment of the bond will be TIF so all the payments eventually the new firehouse will be paid for with TIF funds. Um, so in that, uh, we in Fund 15, which is our debt service, we had to add a transfer uh, line amount of $299,757.05, which is our debt payment for the new bond uh, for 2016. Uh, also in the revenue in Fund 26, which is our new project fund for the project, Fund 26, um, in the 2000, a line item called 2016 bond proce proceeds uh, for Greenwell, $2.5 million revenue. So that's the revenue side. Expense side, uh, these are all additional appropriations. You have uh, in Fund 15, which is uh, the debt service fund, uh, we are budgeting uh, for the principal part, for 2016, $253,470. Uh, in the bond interest part, uh, $46,287.05. Again, now out of those line items, will we make the one, the one in the revenue was the money coming in, and then we're going to transfer it out of TIF into the bond proceeds and then or into the bond debt service, and then the debt service has to pay for, for that. That's how that works. So in that, I just mentioned part of their appropriations in fund, six, fund 16, which is our TIF budget, transfer out, you'll like this, it's a reduction of $242.95. I had guessed at $300,000 for bond, I was off by $242.95. Not such a bad guess of $2.5 million. Um, and the last, our bond project uh, in Fund 26, the expense side, we're appropriating the $2.5 million. And that's all for the transfers tonight. Thank you. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. 
All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2016-011. Resolution entering into consulting services agreement with Focus Capital Solutions, LLC, through December 31st, 2016, and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? Mr. Landrum? Uh, this is with our consultant that uh, assists us in specifically with the state, uh, but it can be local things as well, but specifically state uh, things, laws being passed, uh, house bills, um, all that kind of stuff, and really helps represent the township at a higher level to get our voice heard when changes occur. Uh, so this is really, uh, and helps us know when things are coming down the path or being talked about, you know, at the house level and, and things like that. Uh, so they keep us informed and represent us uh, at the state level. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Sturt? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2016-012. Resolution authorizing the township police chief to execute a use authorization agreement with Hamilton County for use of its firing range and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. We do have a continued presentation this evening. We kind of broke it up a little bit between the police swearing in. And next we're going to have the winners of the 2015 Christmas Parade Awards given by the Delhi Business Administration. And I believe, Marty Schulte, you're going to be the uh, presenter. Do you need an assistant? Marty, can you use the mic? <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to present the winners from the 2015 um, Delhi Business Association Christmas Parade, and we just thank everybody who participated and all of our sponsors for it. Um, it was a great event. We had good weather this year, um, so it was wonderful. Yay! <laughs> So um, if, if the um, winners are here, if they come up, I'd like to present their award to them. Take these just a few at a time. Okay, so for the first ones, we have the President's Award. The winner on that was Heart Pharmacy. We have a representative from Heart Pharmacy. And then um, we had the um, Best Band Award, which went to um, Elder High School, their marching band. Good job. Okay, and then we had for the Best Scout Entry, the Girl Scouts of Western Ohio. Right. Um, we had on for the best walking unit, which the ancient order, uh, ancient order of Hibernia's, um, the St. Patrick Division of Color Guard. All right. And then, of course, for the best Christmas theme was the um, Delhi Historical Society. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, thank you so much. And then we had um, the best decorated car was the Riverview, Riverview Delhi Kiwanis. I'll just accept that on behalf of Kiwanis as I'm a member of Kiwanis. Okay. <laughs> And the best costume character was sponsored by Schaefer Insurance. I didn't see Bob here, but I'll make sure he gets that. Um, the most unique entry we had of was Western Hills Retirement Village. There she is. <clears throat> and then the last one I had was the best dancing unit was Revere Dance Studio. Well, I will make sure that everybody gets these who hasn't, um, wasn't able to make it tonight. Um, so we really do appreciate all the support um, that everybody gives the Delhi Business Association. Um, I also have one other thing from Tony Capo. He asked me to announce tonight if it's okay. Sure. Tony Capo is president of the Delhi Business Association. <laughs> In case. You don't know that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we have an interesting speaker that we'd like to invite the public to at our next business association meeting. It is going to be empowering women. Um, it's all about support, um, defending themselves, your families. Um, they're going to talk about skill training, um, pistol, um, concealed carry, um, just being not being a victim, self-defense products, um, just self-defense in general. So if any, um, we invite everybody to come out. Um, but women especially, or if you have daughters at home and you'd like to um, come hear them speak, we would like to have everybody you know, be aware of this. It's going to be at our um, business association meeting, which is February 10th, 8.30 in the morning at the Delhi Park Lodge. We'll have this on our website, um, who the speakers and that are, but we just felt like this was something that was really important this time of year to, to get the message out and to invite everybody to um, you know, come share this information. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I do not have any citizens comments, okay? Announcement of community events, Mr. Luby. The Delhi Historical Society program, The Florist of Delhi and Language of Flowers will be Monday, February 8th, 2016 at 7 p.m. We'll be at the Delhi Park Lodge at 5125 Foley Road. The Delhi Township Veterans Association general meeting will be Tuesday, February 9th, 2016 will be at the Delhi Senior Community Center at 647 Neeb Road. The Delhi Historical Society Family History Scanning Station will be Thursday, February 11, 2016. It will be from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Bailey Wellness and Fitness Center at 990 Bailey Drive. Delhi Township Fire Department and CERT Community Disaster Preparedness Training will be Monday, February 15, 2016 from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. It'll be at the Delhi Fire Headquarters at 697 Neeb Road. The Delhi Branch Library Program, Writer in Residence Poetry Workshop, will be Tuesday, February 16, 2016, from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Delhi Branch Library at 5095 Foley Road. The Bicentennial Celebration, Delhi Historical Society Farmhouse Exhibits, Delhi in Bloom and the Language of Flowers. There will be two new exhibits. We'll explore Delhi's early history as a wine-growing region, and its transformation into the floral paradise of Ohio. The exhibits are free and open to the public and are on display during visitor hours, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Sundays from 12.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Luby. There is no need for executive session this evening, so I'll ask Trustee Oswald to adjourn the meeting. With no further business, I move to adjourn the meeting. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Meeting adjourned. Everyone go safely, and we'll see you here on Wednesday, February the 10th at 6 p.m. Go safe. <coughs> How are you doing?